PGA is hosting this golf. <laughs> and we are giving a free clinic today. This will be the first um, time that we've done a disc golf clinic here with our DDGA pros, so fantastic. I want to introduce each individual. You guys know who this is, right? Who is it? It's Nathan. And you know who this is too. The free X-Man. Justin Ashton. And then we have a woman. Charlie Rick. Give them the grass. <laughs> Thanks for coming to DDGA and thank you to Gerardo for hosting 2012. This will be our first deaf disc golf clinic. So I'm happy that we can do this for you. We're going to talk a little bit about how to pick the right situation. Um, if you're stuck, you have a tree to go around or some kind of obstacle or something's preventing you from making a straight shot. So we're going to talk about how to make that shot when the odds are against you. <laughs> You have to think about the situation. You have to think about the angle at which you need to make the shot. You need to think about the rate. Should it be a long shot or a shorter shot? I mean, there's all of these kinds of things that are going through your mind. For example, here's some, you know, discs here. I have three different kinds. If I want something that's just going to go high and then plateau out straight into the basket, I'm going to go ahead and pick a driver. And that's going to give me a pretty clean shot. Something that's going to go the distance. There's a fairway driver and a putter that may be able to um, give you that glide. get you closer to the basket than another type of disc would. So some of us have made that mistake. We're trying to figure out the situation and we pick the wrong disc to fit that situation. So now you have to judge which disc is going to work best for the situation that you're in. Many throw putters for 200 to 300 feet, and then they end up going way far off from the target. Sometimes it goes too far right and too far left, and what you really want is something to go straight through, and because it's going to gain speed, right? There's more room for error, when really what you want is something that's going to go more straight in front of you and not go far off to the right and not go off to the left. You have putters, and then you have mid-range drivers, and those things are going to keep you more straight and to the path that you want to go to. We want to get there, but we don't want to get there by going the wrong direction. We want to get there as fast as we can.
Good. Is it smart to play a six or a seven and you're gonna go off a little bit to the left or a little bit off to the right? I mean, that's not gonna be a, a great, it's not gonna be a big deal. And sometimes last minute you think you're gonna get there and then it goes all the way off into the wrong direction. And, you know, you might be off in bushes or you might be off in trees. So you have to think about, you have to strategize about what you're going to be shooting for and what you want in the end, what you want for the end result. So you want to maybe reduce the speed so that it will get you that end result. I mean, how many of you went out of bounds today, right? It's important that you're thinking about wind because if it's super windy then you know you've got something a lot more than what we have today a lot worse so today we just have a little bit of wind and that wind is going to affect your the way your disc moves of course if it's calm and there's not a lot of wind um, then you're good, but if it isn't calm and you have some wind to deal with, you're gonna have to think about that because you're almost gonna wanna throw opposite of what you would normally throw because it's gonna send your disc farther in the direction that you don't want it to go. You have wind pushing to your right, to your left, to the front, and to the back. And I'll show you, a, give you a demo here. So the underside of the disc. Like if I have wind coming this direction, it's going to throw my disc over to the left, right? Because the wind is going underside of the disc. It's, it's carrying that disc up and to the left. You want to make sure that the underside of the disc is pointed in the slight downward position so that the wind doesn't pick it up and carry it to the left. You want it to cut through the wind. <laughs> Last year it was extremely windy and myself and Justin and some others, yeah, you guys know, you remember that. <laughs> he, a, a guy in the audience went first and um, his just cut right through the wind and it was amazing. Mine didn't. My mistake was is that I let the underside of the disc show more, tip up more and it, the wind carried my disc, so that was my mistake. It went way out of bounds. It was crazy. So it's important that you point your disc more at a flat or downward, slight downward motion or pattern so that you can cut through the wind rather than let the wind carry the disc to the destination that you don't want it to go. So it's really important to think about that angle. And if you do see the wind carry it, that's probably what you did. You probably let the disc tilt upward so that the wind was able to carry underside the disc. <laughs> you know, and we all wonder why our discs do certain things, of course. And if it does get carried by the wind, it's really important that you tilt it a little bit downward so that it cuts through rather than get swooped off. <laughs> and sometimes when you're throwing the disc, you think you're going to do it right and then all of a sudden the disc gets carried upward and doesn't make the basket. 
spoon. So what you need to do is drop the discs down a little bit. Some people even throw it, like if it's 30, 40 mile per hour, some people will turn the disc over and throw it that way. So there is no way to carry the disc. And that'll take it directly to the target because there's no way that the wind can pick it up because you're flipping it over. I mean, that's really harsh when 30 to 40 miles per hour, just flip it over and then you can make your target. If it's really windy, um, I suggest using a pig over stable putter. You could use a rock. That would be a mid-range. That would go right into the basket. You just have to play around with it and see what works for you. Do you have any other suggestions? I'm going to talk a little bit about the throw line. So typically you're starting down with your stance. You see a lot of that. And then it ends up the disc goes way up in the air and what you want to do is not bend the body over because you see a lot of that out there with disc golf players you want to keep your body steady straight and then pull it from your shoulders and make sure that your shoulders are pulling straight across the body not in an angle or in a downward position because you're going to throw the disc in the same angle and position that you're throwing your body this kind of disc, a lot of people tend to throw it this way. And I don't understand why people want to do that. What you want to make sure is that you have your arm next to your rib cage and then you're throwing it outwards rather than um, using the arm so that it's outside of the body. You want to keep the elbow closest to the body and then throw it outward that way because that's gonna, what's going to get you to the target. Today I used the stroke but what I ended up doing is I didn't keep it steady. I didn't keep it the plane flat to the ground. Instead I tilted it and it threw me off my target. <laughs> And when you're just scoffing and you can't figure out what happened, it's good to stop and think, what did I do? Oh, I see what I did. I didn't keep my elbow next to my body. I just threw it out there with my arm. You know, you need to think about how to correct what you did inaccurately so that you can be a better disc golfer in the future. You know, there's so much to it. How did I, you know, how did I throw the disc in the first place? Did I tilt it upward? Did I tilt it downward? Did I, you know, did I... Did I not use my shoulders correctly? Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. So it's really important that you think about analyzing all the things that may have went wrong in that situation. And maybe film yourself with something. <laughs> and that way you can look at it later and really see what was going on with those throws that you were making. Anything else you'd like to add? This is one of my favorite discs. I just did an ace with this uh, this past Saturday. It goes very straight. And you can angle it, you know, up or down. It's really important that you use that angle to your advantage. You want to visualize your shot. Do you want it to go up? Do you want it to go to the left? Do you want it to go to the right? And you have to think about your thumb placement. If you want less spin, this is how you want to place it on the disc. If you want it to go up and to the right, this is how you want to place it. It's important that the thumb is out because that's how you're going to slip the disc out to throw it. 
less thumb means it's going to curve faster. If I need something to really curve, I'm going to pull the thumb in and I'm going to throw it. And that way it'll really catch the curve, it'll really cut over. <laughs> Because of where I place my thumb, I know that it's going to spin a certain way or go to the right or however that is. It's a speed six and it'll do anything you need. This is a rogue driver. It's a good disc, good quality disc. So it has weight of 164 up to 174, or 166 or something like that. One thing with the putter, I know a lot of people kind of change off their putters pretty often, but it's important that you stabilize the throw. If you want it to go left or straight or right, I mean, all of those things are important. Um, the number one thing that's important though is how you feel about your putter. If you don't feel good with your putter, then don't use it. Don't use that particular disc. All the putters have different designs. Um, this one's a little bit big. And for me, um, I like them a little bit big. There's others that are even thicker than this, and it's not my kind of thing. And then there's others that are really floppy, and I hate that. So um, some people love it, though. They love if they're really floppy and bendable and flexible, and they feel really comfortable with it. Um, they're really thin. Um, those kinds typically um, XD and... Uh, and Ringer. Uh, those kinds of discs are more thin, but you need to make sure that you're comfortable with your putter. Because if you're not comfortable with your putter, you're not going to feel good about your shot. Are you going to make a good basket if you don't feel comfortable with your shot? No. So you need to find stuff that fits you. It's not because your best friend has one. I mean, you know, Justin and I, for example, we're really good friends, but our putters are completely different than the other. So it's just about being comfortable. You know, it's important. He likes his disc and I like mine. It's the same with you. Follow your, your comfort level. What you feel is really good. And if it fits you, then use it. That will help you make it grow. Any questions? I've been signing and talking a lot, so I haven't given you a chance to ask any questions. Does anybody have any questions? When it's a really windy day, do you have any suggestions about using any particular blizzard? Um, <coughs> against the wind it's going to flip or if you're going with if it's you can use the blizzard if it's on the side or if it's going with the disc but against it's not going to work I mean you have to think about wind versus a 30 gram disc I mean the wind's always going to win right so today we have a nice day, it's a little breezy, but it's a pretty <coughs> decent day as far as the wind goes. But if it's a 75 gram disc, it's gonna be more heavy and you're gonna to wanna to use that probably more than you're gonna use a lighter disc. So that's important to keep in mind. Any other questions? <laughs> Cutter has that last bump around the ridge, the bead there. Um, does this one have it? Let's see. It's not really, doesn't really have it on this one. Here, I'll throw you mine.
the rock has a has a bead on it, and the bead's supposed to help with a little bit with stability. It's supposed to give it a little bit more stabilization, um, and that's really its purpose. But. Um, I still think it goes back to how you feel about it. It's all about feeling. But that is the concept. Any more questions? Mm. brings up a good point here. Um, if you get a new disc and then you try it during the tournament, my suggestion is not to do that. Uh, some people go ahead and do it, um, but I think you really need to wait until you've thrown with it five to ten times before you decide to use it for a tournament. Because um, I know that some people got some new discs today and we're going to hand some out. <laughs> and they're gonna go ahead and try to throw that and I just think that's not really a great idea. Um, you really need to field test it first and see if it fits what you're doing um, and that would just be a lot better especially in a, in a tournament situation. Are we good? Any more questions? And then who all paid attention? Uh, gets one free disc from uh, DGA. <laughs> There's a reef and a uh, squall. And uh, thank you for paying attention and listening. And uh, they're happy to sign the disc if you want. Mm-hmm.